we want to help be an umbrella over the anti-war and anti-imperialist movement because it's it's fell apart, like we've said, under Obama, and um, it hasn't gotten back together, and we need it now. It's very important. You're listening to The Corbett Report. Welcome, friends. James Corbett here, CorbettReport.com. Today is the 17th of September, 2018, and today we're talking to Emma Fiala, who is a photographer, an activist, a mother, and an independent journalist whose works have been featured at such outlets as Mint Press News, The Anti-Media, Zero Hedge, and other outlets uh, besides. But it is in her role as a steering committee member of the Women's March on the Pentagon at marchonpentagon.com that we're specifically talking to her to today. So, of course, that link will be in the show notes for today's conversation, along with everything else we're talking about. Emma Fiala, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. All right, Emma. Well, I like things that do what they say on the tin. So marchonpentagon.com is a great URL and it's already got my attention. So tell us a little bit about this. What is the Women's March on the Pentagon? How did this team come together and what's your involvement in this? Well, the March on the Pentagon is, like you said, exactly what it says. Um, In October, on the 20th and 21st, we're meeting in Washington, D.C., and on the 21st is the day that we are marching on the Pentagon. Um, It's the Women's March on the Pentagon. Um, It's called Women's because it's in direct response to the popular women's marches that have taken over the last couple of years um, and the absence of the issue of war from pretty much everything that they've been talking about. Um, So we think war is an incredibly important issue. Um, And Cindy Sheehan, who is probably an anti-war activist that you're aware of, um, she approached the Others Women's March and she um, asked them why war wasn't one of their issues. She thinks it should be. And they basically told her that, Cindy, that's your issue. That's not our issue. Um, And that didn't sit well with her. (laughs) So um, her response was to set this up. And um, I believe she began back in January with the idea. And not too long after I got on board um, through Mint Press, because I do social media for Mint Press. And Cindy was in need of some social media help. Um, And as soon as we got together and started talking about it, I knew that this was an issue that was very important to me um, and that I had a lot more to offer than just um, social media. So I help with the website and um, there's basically a team of three of us that are kind of the the core three people working on on almost everything. Um, And we're getting closer. (laughs) So that's why we're trying to promote it a lot more now. Um, So basically the, the March is about, um, we, we want to focus on war being such a a bipartisan issue that, um, it's not a a democratic thing and it's not a Republican thing. A lot of, um, Democrats right now are surprisingly okay with the issue of war. I know you're aware of that. Um, and the anti-war movement kind of died a very uneventful death during Obama's two terms. And um, so we're trying to bring that back on the table, especially after seeing what the recent women's marches have done and ignored that, that it's it's really easy right now in the U.S. to organize a march when there's some sort of issue happening. Um, but ironically, a lot of those different issues can kind of be traced back to the fact that the U.S. empire is so focused on war and all of our money is going towards war. Um if you want to march or just people are organizing for better education for um, because of poverty and all of these things that if we had money that we weren't spending overseas, trillions of dollars, we could fund all of these things at home. Um, so it's kind of the overarching issue to a lot of us, even environmentally. The um, U.S. war machine is the biggest polluter Um it uses the, it's the biggest consumer of fossil fuels. Um, a lot of things that are kind of hot button issues right now can be traced back to war. So we want to put that back in the forefront and kind of build up the anti-war movement again. It makes sense uh, on a number of levels, because as you say, so many of these different issues actually come back to the war machine at its root. And you can trace so many of the the ills that, uh, that fester throughout society to this, that it's almost... It's almost baffling in a sense. Why wouldn't all of these various movements that arise and all these other activist uh, movements that are happening, why wouldn't they focus 
on the Pentagon and on war. And why would they say mm-hmm. to someone like Cindy Sheehan, that's your issue. We're, mm-hmm. we're over here. We, we don't care about what the Pentagon is doing. That, that seems baffling until, of course, you realize that, of course, it's de- by design. The system yes. wants <laughs> that, that sort of distraction. So I, I like this idea in a number of ways. I heard Cindy Sheehan refer to this as the nonpartisan march on yes. the bipartisan war machine, which is the exact right way of putting it, because of course, the political puppets, it really doesn't matter which one is in office, the Pentagon's uh, agenda continues to march on, and uh, unfortunately continues to be well funded. But And I also appreciate the kind of jujitsu move of taking these women's marches that are springing up mm-hmm. in the era of Trump and directing them towards something so fundamentally important as the war machine, whether it's Trump's face on that war machine or Obama's or whoever's, we've got to focus on the war machine. So I appreciate that. But last time I checked, I'm not a woman and I don't <laughs> identify as a woman. So am I excluded from this movement? No, you're definitely not. Um, so like I said, Part of why it's called a women's march is in response to those previous marches. Um, But it's also in response to the fact that women are are unfortunately adversely affected by war at much greater rates than men. Um, But that is often absent from the discussions of war. Um, I believe it was Common Dreams that reported that um, 80 percent of casualties of war are are women. Um, 80 percent of um, refugees, thanks to war, are women. Women are um, you know, around military bases. They're subject to kidnappings and rapes and getting sucked into sex trafficking. Um, when men often return back from combat in the U.S., there's not always, of course, but there's a lot more um, domestic violence at home. And all of these things affect women a lot more than they do men. And we want to shine a light on that because people really ignore that issue too often. Um, so it's it's organized by women. Our, our main creators are women and our steering committee who are the team of people who are coordinating. Most of the things are all women. Um, but our advisory committee who we, um, reference if we need a little bit of extra help with things, those are women and men. We have some men slated to speak. Um, men are of course invited to attend the fact that the point that it's called a women's March in the Pentagon is because it's organized by women and we want to bring a focus back on how war affects women. Well, again, I think that that's an admirable uh, cause in a number of ways, especially, again, if you are concerned about the plight of women in the world generally, one would assume, then you should be concerned about the women who are being bombed in Yemen right now, for example, by Saudi Arabia with the active support of the United States, without whose support Mm -hmm. that bombing campaign wouldn't be sustainable. So, Mm -hmm. again, these issues all keep coming back to the war machine. And if we are concerned about the plight of women and children, and hey, men as well, we should be concerned Mm -hmm. about the war machine and the way that it's directed. So I think that's, uh, that's laudable. And again, taking piggybacking on these various... Trump, Trump, anti-Trump movements and activist protests, and and saying, well, here's a here's a the the, the core issue or a core issue towards this, I think is an important thing to do. Um, it does bring to mind the the the, the sort of question that I, again. I heard Cindy Sheehan referring to this in a different interview where uh, she saw at one of the women's marches one of the protesters held, holding a sign that said something like, if Hillary had been elected, we'd be at brunch right now, yes. which pretty much sums it up. That that actually is the argument from the real anti-war side. Yes, you would yes. be at brunch because you don't care if it's the different face on the, the war machine. Can you speak to that aspect of this? Um, definitely. That's very true. Um, I mean, that's pretty much what we experienced with Obama, that the anti-war movement went to sleep because they, they thought that they had that that person who was going to save them from all these things because they didn't actually care that much about it. Um, so it's, it's unfortunately easy to pacify the people who, who think that they care about war, who think that they care about some of these things that are not actually affecting them personally. Um, and they just go to sleep when, when they get their chosen elected officials. So, um, (laughs) There's a lot of things that are bad about Trump. There's a lot of things that we don't like about him. Um, But the one good thing is that people haven't been able to go to sleep. People are angry and people are aware of what's going on more than they would have been if if Hillary would have won and they would have been at brunch. Um, We just want to help focus those people a little bit more onto the overarching issue. 
it's the struggle, I think, in every administration, whether it's the left or the mm -hmm. right, you've got to get the people who are motivated to oppose this in administration to oppose it for the right reasons in the right ways mm -hmm. that will be actually effective. It's the ongoing struggle. So let's bring this back to the march. Uh, again, tell us when this is happening, how it's happening, how people can get involved with it, what, what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. um, well, the best thing to do is to head over to our website, marchonpentagon.com. Um, like I said, the, the march is happening on October 21st, so it's coming up soon. Um, on October 20th, the day before, we're going to have some workshops um, like self-defense and um, civil resistance. And um, I'd like to add a lot more workshops, too. We're still in the planning phase. Um, because we are not the other women's march and because we are not these um, things that are kind of sanctioned by the bigger political parties, we don't have a lot of funding and we don't have a lot, a, a big team. So we're still adding things in, even though we're getting close to the date. Um, but on the 21st is going to be our March. Um, it will be relatively short. We're meeting at um, the, I think it's, I want to say the right stop because I'm not familiar with Washington, D.C. Um, it's the Pentagon City Station, which is not to be confused with the Pentagon Metro Station, but <laughs> similar names. We're going to meet at the city station and then we're going to march over to the Pentagon and have a rally there um, where we will have quite a few different speakers um, and some musical guests. Um, and it's going to move through pretty quickly so people don't get bored, but we're going to have a good representation of people who are passionate about the anti-war um, movement and um the purpose of the march right now is that we are getting together on this date and we're, we're making a clear statement um, for people to see and we're gathering together to kind of, you know, in, encourage each other and to have that unity behind the anti-war movement. But then we want to continue that. This is not supposed to just be a march that's going to happen on October 21st and then be done. Um, we want to help be an umbrella over the anti-war and anti-imperialist movement because it's it's fell apart like we've said under obama and um it hasn't gotten back together and we need it now it's very important and um so we're hoping that after the 21st we keep going and we're not we're not just a march we're hoping that we'll become a movement and that's our goal well, towards that goal, I mean, this is the online age and 99% of the people who are listening to this conversation are probably not in geographical proximity of Washington, D.C. or able to mm -hmm. attend. So I'm assuming this will be recorded for posterity and uh, there will be ways for people to see the events, even if they're not uh, physically there. Yes, um, it, it will be recorded. And um, I'm actually had just been thinking a little bit more last night about picking out who's going to be our live streamer so we can go to some of the bigger pages on Facebook and wherever we can find to have a stream as well. Um, and we also are encouraging people who can't make it to DC to organize their own local actions. Um, and I'm personally telling people, you know, if, if you're in a small town or even if you're in a big town and it's just you, that's fine. You can head over to our website and we have a form that you can fill out to register your march so people can see um, if there might be one near them. Maybe there's another one person in their town who's going to stand up with a sign in support of or in solidarity with us um, and they can find each other that way. So I know not everybody can make it to D.C., especially people who are overseas. Um, we do have a few people coming in from far away, which is pretty exciting. Um, but I would personally love to see people stand up across the globe, even if it's just one person that matters. Um, and it would be great if people could head over to our website and check the map and add something to the map if they're willing to, to do their own thing. And it doesn't matter where it is. Um, but if you even just open up Google Maps and look for something that has to do with the U.S. military or something that has to do with an arms manufacturer, we all live within close proximity of somewhere that you could stand in front of um, with your sign. Well, there are always excuses that people can make for why they couldn't participate or weren't able to make it. But one excuse that no one has is that they couldn't remember the URL. Marchonpentagon.com. It's not difficult. So at the very least, I hope my listeners will be motivated to check out the website and explore uh, the team and the issues that are raised there and uh, to think about this and how they can apply that in their own locality. I think that's uh, going to do it for today, Emma. Anything else you'd like to share with the audience today? No, I just hope people head over to the website and learn a little bit and spread the word too. We need help with that. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Well, we'll leave it there for today. Emma, thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks. The Corbett Report is brought to you by the Corbett Report subscriber. 
a weekly newsletter featuring James Corbett's International Forecaster Editorial, recommended reading and viewing, discounts on Corbett Report DVDs, and once a month, a subscriber-only video. Sign up today to start receiving your copy at corbettreport.com support.